Island parrot or LIP species bred accidentally on one of the island's many toxic wastes. <laughs> no wonder how it doesn't come on the show anymore. Let's see who else is in the book. <clears throat> Kim Jong-il gone with the wind. Giuliani, Diane Feinstein, Hillary Clinton we touched on. There's one more here i got to read from. I just, just need to get away from yesterday's election, that's all. Bill Clinton! Okay, the last one of the day from the political zoo, which, by the way, is a classic. It's probably for sale for like $200 somewhere. I, I don't own anymore. I, I gave them all away. Bill Clinton, Fondlium ungropium. The celebrated Arkansas werewolf is so entirely distinct that there is nothing or no one quite like it in captivity or in the wild. Wolf Boy, as he is sometimes called, given his failure to grow up and become an adult of any species, is native to the southeastern United States, but now roams the world in a pack of one. His mother, Virginia, was a human. That much is known. His lupine nature he derives from his father, about whom nothing is known. Wolf Boy has received international attention as the most outsized, most outrageous, most entertaining animal in the zoo. His indiscreet and indiscriminate mating rituals and borderline criminal activities have captivated the media and the masses for years. Do not be fooled, though, for this semi-lupine wonder is one of the zoo's most dangerous, <laughs> dangerous inhabitants. Uh, Wolf Boy was put on the endangered species list after Waco, after Whitewater, after Trooper Gate, after Travel Gate, after File Gate, after China Gate, after Monica and his subsequent impeachment, after Pardon Gate and the pillaging of the White House. But seemingly not even a cross held before his very eyes can stop his marauding. Wolf Boy is occasionally seen stalking the streets of Harlem or in the New York countryside or reportedly in Ireland, whose clueless population has only seen the boy part and not the wolf. He tries to keep a full hemisphere away from the one creature of whom he is justly petrified, the limber leopard of Chappaqua, with whom with, with, with whom he once made it. <laughs> I guess I won't be vi invited to Chappaqua for Christmas. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Now what? What did I burn through? Three minutes of a radio show? I don't want to do politics anymore. I'm sick of it. Here's the news. New news. Pope faces Mexicans worshiping skeletal death saint. No one else is new. No, they're, they're good Catholics. But they'll fill the pews, that's all. What do you think he's there for? It's for business. He knows the pews have emptied out here in America. So he figures if he floods in more illegals, the churches will fill up again. For obvious reasons, that's what he wants. Here's the next story. Re radiation sterilized mosquitoes may be used to combat mosquito-borne Zika virus. All right, I've heard about this. Uh, it could produce, it could be a backfire strategy, by the way. If you breed male, mos if you take breeding male mosquitoes and you sterilize them with radiation and you release them into the wild, what you assume is that we'll control the Aedes aegypti mosquito, but it won't. I know the concept was pioneered in the 50s when U.S. scientists used it to eradicate the screw, screw worm fly, but when you apply it to mosquitoes, it will not necessarily work. Why? They mate only once and only females bite. The strategy depends on releasing enough mosquitoes to crowd wild males out of the mating game, letting the current generation die out without reproducing. That's quite a trick, by the way, to pull off. Let's see what's in the news. I'm not interested in Hillary. SCOTUS halts Obama's war on coal temporarily, blah, blah, blah. Here's a thing with coal. Uh, okay, now let's go on to the calls on the Savage Nation. Zika is the story. Are there any other good calls out there? Uh, Tanner on WVLK Radio in Kentucky. Welcome to the program. Go ahead, please. Yeah, you talked about wanting to mention the Zika virus in the show earlier. I would just wanted to call in. I'm an immunologist uh, that's based out of Kentucky, and I've been working on uh, viruses of that kind, mosquito-borne illnesses, for a matter of years. Just kind of wanted to uh, talk about how the virus itself, while it's relatively mild, it does still pose a threat. Anytime you put a new virus into a population, say if you threw it into the United States population, uh, you're going to have the potential for mutation. You're going to have the potential for an increase in virulence. And it could eventually, down the line, cause more problems than we're willing to deal with. Uh, so I think it's, it would be a good idea to monitor this more closely. It needs to be paid attention to. We need to prevent it from getting into our indigenous mosquito populations, uh, prevent it from getting circulated around in, in the human population, even though it can't be transferred from human to human except through sexual contact. Uh, it's just something so wait, so, <laughs> doctor... 
you're an immunologist and you are agreeing that Zika can be that Zika is unstable and it could become it could mutate into something more dangerous is what you're saying. Of course, viruses are always very volatile. They can change instantly. Uh, you've got things like H1N1 with the flu. It generated a completely new strain that posed a very, very uh, dangerous threat to a, a novel population uh, normally unaffected by the flu, caused the 1918 flu epidemic. So what would you recommend if you were running the CDC's prevention program for the Zika virus? What would you recommend to control it? The very first thing I would say is we need to increase research on it. We need to find out what it is and really get down to the chemistry of how it's transmitted. The second thing, I would limit travel in and out of the United States and in and out of countries. Oh, so you agree with me. That's, that's epidemiology 101. And yet the head of the NIH, Fauci, who's been there longer than most diseases, has nothing to offer other than using a, a bug spray. I never saw anything like this politicization of the NIH. I'm sure that you're... Uh, You've experienced some of this uh, this uh, idiocy coming out of the uh, scientific establishment. Of course, and you have to look at organizations like the WHO who do not have any medical doctors in their administrative and governing staff. They're all those who have been put in there simply by uh, the fact that they can, they can fill a seat. And they may have experience and background, but they're not a medical doctor, and they don't know everything that's going on. With and, Doctor, you, you, are, you are an M.D.? I am not. No, I'm Ph.D. Very good. So am I. And I'm going to make this promise to you, doctor, and everyone else listening to the show who is fed up with the politicization of our medical establishment in America, particularly in the NIH, the National Institute of Medicine, and all these other groups that have been taken over by politicians. If Donald Trump becomes president, the one thing I will ask him is let me advise you as to how to clean up science in America and give young, honest scientists a chance to bring medicine and science back in this country. I'll be back in a minute. Be here or be nowhere. Are you ready for more satire, boys and girls? I hope you say yes, because here it comes. So I'm going back again to 2006, because I want to get off the uh, election just for a minute. Copyright 2006. 2006. Man, uh, the political zoo. And here's John McCain, who I called the turncoat mole. And his Latin binomial, the one I gave him, is Stockholmus blemishii. The turncoat mole is a crafty creature that is quick to switch pack allegiances without any observable reason to do so. It regularly eats from the lower ends of the food chain, but constantly harasses any other animal choosing to do so. In the year 2000, the turncoat mole was all but exterminated from the national scene when it tried to root itself into the ha hostile habitat of South Carolina. It retreated to Arizona and is now making gestures to go national once again. The turncoat mole sometimes hunts in tandem with the Senate snakes, with at least a few moles being eaten for dinner in exchange for looking bipartisan. Perhaps its chief natural weakness is that it, it is blind to how its burrowing undermines the principles of the party pack. I think that's pretty good, John McCain. Sean Penn, pesky apologista. Native to the left coast, the big beak toucan is a colorful, if perpetually ill-tempered, bird of paradise, born and bred in the protected environs of Hollywood. But unlike most toucans, this one is strangely compelled to migrate to war zones and disaster areas. While adverse to the glare of flash bulbs, hence the bird's notoriety for striking out at photographers, do I have any time here? The big beak toucan, I can't even read this. It's very funny. It's satire. The political zoo. You can't buy it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Last night as I watched the victory speeches, certain uh, things struck me as very, very clear. Hillary is out of her mind. She gave a victory speech rather than a concession speech. There was no concession in the mad woman's speech. She made believe she won when she clearly got decimated last night. Did you see her? Did you see the speech as though she had been a victor? And then I saw the stage with uh, the Trump family, and I said, Camelot is back. That's right, that's what I said to a very good friend. He was stunned by it. I said, America finally has a choice. I said, even liberals understand that with the Trump family, America will be back, that Camelot is back. 
And you have a clear choice here. You want a street radical with a dirty suit like Bernie Sanders? Or do you want Camelot? Do you want America to be alive again? Where people can walk with their heads up again? You know, I have a friend from England who just came over here this last weekend. And he said, you should see what's going on in England right now. He said, in London, people walk with their heads down. Everyone's defeated. Did you know that? Why don't you walk around your city today in New York? Walk around in San Francisco. Walk around in Dallas. Walk around in Phoenix. Walk around in Chicago. Walk around in Miami. And tell me people are walking around with their heads held high. They're not. They're walking around keeping their heads as close as they can to their shoulders because they are afraid. They're very afraid from what this man has unleashed upon this society. He has turned street thugs into victims at the same time he has turned the police into a neutral force. This devil in the White House has neutralized the police and has unleashed the street thugs on American society. And this is just the beginning. It's step number one. It is step number one of the revolution that has arrived in America. Trump represents America's hope. The Democratic Party, whoever it may be, the corrupt Hillary or the psychotic communist Bernie, in either case, those two represent the communist revolution. You say, oh, don't be crazy. Oh, no. Study the history of communism and see how first they said we bring about socialism, which eventually will become communism. When Bernie holds up his fist in a black power salute, and says this is a revolution, and he has been a lifetime street agitator, communist revolutionary, for his entire sick life. What do you think he intends to do? What do you think will follow if, God forbid, this psychotic street radical wins? Would you like to see Al Sharpton as Attorney General? Would you like to see the Black Panther Party running the U.S. military? Shall I go down the list of what might happen after they seize your guns and they release the thugs? in Black Lives Matter upon the streets of America, having armed them as their private army? Now you say this is crazy and you're getting carried away. Oh, really? That's why I've been wrong for 21 years. That's why I've survived in the most competitive industry in the, in the world for 21 years. Listen to me very carefully. Even though Obama will be out of power, he will wield power behind the scenes because he has been a revolutionary for these eight years. What I love about these speeches from Sanders and Hillary, uh, they're acting as though there's a Republican right-wing government running America when we've had a radical, psychotic, left-wing government for eight straight years that's decimated this nation from top to bottom. Oh, I know the rich have never been richer. And that's the paradox. You say, how can that be? How can Obama be a socialist if the rich have never been richer? Well, in order to understand the answer to that question, you have to know a little bit about history. At the same time this is going on, Lenin's Pope is set to arrive in Mexico on Friday for an agitation, a six-day visit that will conclude with this meddler standing on the U.S. border to show solidarity with the illegal alien invaders trying to cross it. This man should be deported if he arrives in America again. And I'll tell you who brought him in last time, that shameful John Boehner, who said it was the greatest thing he ever did was bringing the Pope to America. This is astounding to me that you would let a politician act as a religious man. Someone wrote this. Obama has a willing accomplice in overthrowing our government and way of life. He means the Pope. And then he wrote this. Pope Francis, you are not welcome outside the Vatican, and any Catholic who would support your political worldview should denounce him now. Even Christ said, my kingdom is not of this world. Apparently, Francis does not take the word of God as infallible, only himself. And as I've said in my book, Government Zero, he is Lenin's pope through and through. First, he tried to be a genius on climate change. He was totally wrong on that. And now he plans to show up at the border masquerading as an illegal alien from Mexico. The pope should be sitting in jail for his crimes against children worldwide. That's my opinion. Secondly, he's a hypocrite of the highest order. He is the epitome of the word hypocrite. When well, the day the Vatican sells off its art and gives the money to the poor, or the day the Vatican opens up its borders and lets the poor pour in from Iraq and Syria is the day I'll believe a word that comes out of this Catholic Church under Pope Francis, Lenin's Pope. Now, I want to tell you something about communism, since many of you heard it, you don't know what it really means. You can find it yourself by reading the Communist Manifesto. 
which was an 1848 political pamphlet written by Karl Marx and Frederick.